Welcome back to the LNX Files. As always, this is a safe space for all things spooky. And today we're gonna use these tarot cards to do a week ahead read for all 12 signs of the Zodiac for September 17th through the 23rd. Let's go. So we've got some nice transits in the week ahead, so I'm amped for this week. Last week was cool too. Last week we had that nice new moon. I did a little new moon ritual on the roof of my building and I really felt like a twinge of something. Like I really felt like the moon and the other celestial bodies were like, oh, hey, thanks, we appreciate it, like, good. And when you do these rituals with like the new moon or a full moon or any other transits that are happening, you always wanna make sure that you're not like trying to cajole the universe to just simply give you what you want. You know, you wanna do these things and say like, hey, this is what I would like to happen. I'm wrong about a lot of things, you know, sometimes the things I want won't be best for me, but this is what I'm putting out there and you know, let me know if you can help out. And I have been finding that some of the themes of the Venus retrograde have been cropping up in my life again because Venus is making the squares to Jupiter and the squares to Uranus again. She's locking into those positions. So certain themes are coming up for me again. And they're challenging, you know, I'm having like drama with a coworker. It's that same coworker I have a crush on, but I choose to be optimistic. So with this week, we open the week. So it's September 17th when this video is dropping. We've got a, that nice square locking in, into place. Venus squaring Jupiter again. Beautiful. I'll take it. Give me two of those. So this is the last one. So this is a square that we have seen throughout the summer when Venus was in retrograde. And now we're having it and Venus is direct. So she's done the work of the retrograde. She's like, oh, hey, you again. Remember that thing we talked about? Let's see how we can refine that. So guys, this is really a, just, a, it's a time of manifestation. Some of you may go out and buy a big old expensive TV. And I say, enjoy your TV. You know, like if you wanna do something spendy, do it. Like if you want to do something creative, romantic, ooey gooey, abundant, grandiose, like these are the two benefics in the sky and they're like shaking hands right now. Also, just don't be surprised if themes that you're dealing with over the summer of either just like communication or uh, collaboration or hammering out agreements, you know, comes up again. Like look back to what was going on with you back in June any notable events, don't be surprised if they crop up and just set the intention right now while you're watching this video that everything's going to go your way. It's just all going to go your way. You're going to be really, really happy. So this is the transit for that to manifest. Okay. All right. Done and done. So then on September 19th, we've got the sun opposing Neptune. So this is a very magical, just sort of like mystical transit. Like Neptune is nebulous, hazy, gaseous, watery. So all things are possible when Neptune is involved. And I feel like with this transit, we're having a theme of like shining a light into the fog. So I think for a lot of people, things that were maybe hidden or murky or unclear are gonna start to be revealed. They're gonna start to show themselves. So you're gonna be like, oh, that's what was going on. This can also manifest for other people as like breakthroughs or leveling up where you're like, I know what to do. And for some of you, you're just gonna feel like ooey gooey, I don't know why I always use that word, but I feel like it gets my point across. Like some of you are just gonna have like bouts of inspiration where you're like, oh, you know, we'll put the gold leaf there, you know, like, oh, I know what to do. So that's great. I'm totally here for that. Some astrologers refer to this as like a transit with like Neptunian yearning. Like there's a reason why Neptune is the modern day ruler of Pisces. And there's a reason why so many musicians have Pisces in their immediate chart. So musicians are able to kind of like make contact with like the mystical and the magical and they're just sort of like, oh, I know what that is. And they put it into this different language of like sound and song and melodies. And it, I think it's quite magical that the work that musicians do just like period. So be prepared for just aspects like of that, of those qualities, those kind of like hazy, magical, mystical qualities appearing in your life or in your work and however your work manifests. It's kind of like with the sun involved, it's kind of like a bat sign to the heavens. You know, like, you know, when Gotham City was in trouble, they'd shine the bat light and then Batman would be like, oh, I got it. We're kind of doing that with the sun shining a light into Neptune and just being like, hey, mystical world, help us out, you know, make contact. So that's nice. Okay, 
Then on September 20th through the 21st, we're having the sun trining Pluto. So they're both in earth signs. And keep in mind that this is the last thing that the sun does before it leaves Virgo and it enters Libra. And so in Libra season, the dark is getting darker. The day is, we are in fall now, like light is falling, light is decreasing. So before that seasonal change, the sun had one last thing it wanted to do, right? And it wanted to make an aspect with Pluto. So we've got the sun, which, you know, can burn us, but for the most part is, you know, a celestial body that helps the crops grow and helps us see things and it can illuminate, you know, it's a very, the sun and the moon aren't benefics or malefics, they just are, right? You know, they're, they're big ass stars, right? So for the sun to be trining, like, you know, the Lord of darkness, the Lord of the underworld, but you know, like Pluto's not all bad. Pluto is also the Lord of Re regeneration, renaissance, rebirth, like rising up from the ashes. So there's a lot of potential with, with Pluto. So with the sun training Pluto, I view this as a continuation of the theme of the sun opposing Neptune. So we're shining a light into the darkness. And like Pluto is very much like the god of the darkness, of the subterranean, of the buried, of the subconscious, of the hidden. And the sun and Pluto are saying like, hey, let's uncover anything that was hiding out in the shadows and we're gonna do it in a way that's not jarring because we know with like squaring Pluto transits, it can often be very sudden and very like, a, what, you're having an affair? Like, oh, you've been stealing money from me or like, it can be very jarring when the subterranean comes up. This is a, a gentler aspect where it's just like, the things that we needed to know, the things that we wanted to know, the things that we needed to realize, they're being uncovered for us in, in, a, in a gentler fashion. So I see this as very, very helpful. And then finally we have on the 22nd, Sunday, the sun is going to be entering Libra, where Mars and the asteroid palace Athena already are. And we've talked about this theme about justice with a sword, with those two celestial bodies there. And now we have the sun there, too. So it's almost like those two celestial bodies are getting planetary support in like the form of a big flashlight. So I'm, I'm amped for this week. I, I feel like it's going to be more good things, right? More good things. More good things, God damn it! more good things. Okay, so as always, like, subscribe, comment, it helps the channel to grow, and watch the clip for your rising sign as well as your sun sign. I know some of you watch the clip for your moon. I can't stop you. It's fine, I do it too sometimes. Okay, and my Aries sun and my Aries rising signs. What am I doing with this card? Why, why am I holding them like this? Okay, so my Aries sun, my Aries rising signs. Okay, Aries sun and Aries rising signs, you got the four of wands upright. So the Four of Wands Upright is bringing things together with structure and development. This is a building transit. So this is a building card. It's where you're going to see things that matter to you in your life coming together. I don't know what my bangs are doing either. They're coming together in a meaningful way of like structure, solidity, consistency, development. So is there something that you've been working on? Because you're going to start to see the little seedlings grow. Like is there... This can be like a, a relationship milestone, but you may just simply walk around and just feel a greater sense of like solid solidity in your life, practicality, things developing. This is like developing in a way where like you can hang your hat on it. And so I see a lot of this in like the sun trine Pluto transit that we talked about, which is like, you know, things are coming together, but in a way that's very earthy and substantial. So I see this as a as a very auspicious card for you, my Aries folk. Okay. And now my Taurus folk, my Taurus rising signs. Okay, interesting. So Taurus folk, you guys got the judgment card in reverse. So upright, this is usually like God has a plan. Like this is a, a card that either highlights the hand of God in your life, or it's a card that highlights, you know, the, the need for you to have faith about what's unfolding. So even if things look like chaos, God has a plan. So when this card comes up in reverse, either this is a time for you to exert your own free will in the week ahead, and that's gonna be heightened. So you may just be in numerous situations where like the universe isn't giving you any hints, the universe is just asking you to make a decision. 
So if that's the case, I would say like, you're just gonna have to lean into your gut in the week ahead and just trust yourself and trust the way you call shots or make decisions. You also, sometimes with this card, you may be put into a situation where you feel like your faith is tested, your faith in people, in, in confidence, in the universe, in yourself. Like you may just be in a situation in the week ahead where you're just like, I don't know, like this is crazy. Everything's insane, I don't know what to do. I, there's no order, like, and this is a card which would also call you to have faith, not just in the process or in the planets, but also faith in yourself, okay? So that's good. That's a good challenge. And I feel like my Taurus folk are up for the challenge. And like Taurus folk, like you, this may be coming to a head for you like later in the week when we have that trine between Pluto and the sun in earth signs. So very interesting stuff. Okay, and now my Gemini folk, my Gemini rising signs. Okay, Gemini folk. So you guys got the nine of wands upright. So... Gemini's, this is just a card of wait and see. So I, I know it can be a very frustrating card for many of us when this comes up in a spread, when you're like asking for a specific answer about something. But, and especially for Gemini's, your minds work so quickly, you guys can often get impatient. So I would just say like the universe is acknowledged, like whatever that thing that you were like thinking about when you clicked on this video, it's saying like, hey, we know you planted your wands, you've done this work or this time and attention on this like particular issue. The universe is acknowledging that and now this is just kind of your time to just wait and see. There's actually nothing more to do. Sometimes just waiting, you know, or just, you know, putting positive expectations out to the universe is action. You know, it, it just is sometimes. So that's something to be mindful of in the week ahead, uh, my, my Gemini folk. And you guys are often very action oriented. This is also a time to just, you know, be silent and not try to control or manipulate or steer things in a particular direction. Like sometimes the best action to take is just being like, I, I trust things are gonna unfold as, as they're supposed to, you know? Okay. All right, and now my Cancer folk, my Cancer rising signs. Okay, Cancer folk, so you guys got the Five of Cups upright. All right, so this is a nice Cancer card. I, I know, I know. So it's, it's Five of Cups, so it signals some sort of disappointment. Now, some of you folks may have already had the disappointment. Like, I'm not saying like something disappointing is gonna happen in the week ahead. Like, some of you Cancer folks may be just mourning something that's like kind of sad. And what this card is asking you to do in the week ahead this doesn't have to be major. Like you may just be in a situation where you're like, oh, I wish things had gone differently with that thing that may have already manifested, that may be manifesting in this week ahead. But what this card is really trying to tell you, Cancer folk, is that like this is a week where you need to process your feelings. So I don't want you to focus on like the ill tidings, oh, something bad's gonna happen. Like you don't wanna start the week with that in your headspace, so that something bad's gonna happen. What this card is telling you is that like this is a week where you will need to process your feelings. Do the thing where you are processing your feelings, right? So go to the little sad lake, go to the little river, put on your black hoodie, and like be sad and like enjoy being sad, okay, in the week ahead. And just like get it all out. And like my cancer folk, you guys are great at that. You're great at crying and processing your emotions. In some ways you could say that cancer is like one of the healthiest signs of the zodiac. So I want you to just take advantage of that. And I don't want you going to the week thinking like something bad ha is gonna happen. You may just be in like very intense situations in the week ahead where you're gonna need to like, you know, go, go to the ladies room or go to your little closet, have your little cancer cry and then come back and rejoin everyone. And that in some ways, cancer folk, this is your superpower, right? Like you're able to do it like very quickly and then like continue on. And you know, this is why cancer folks, I feel like you guys don't have a lot of the, you know, health issues that other signs have because you're getting it out. You're processing your emotions in real time. You know, you're like a computer deleting files and then like, ooh, I got all this fresh space for storage. So do not shy away from that in the week ahead. Okay. And now, my Leo folk, my Leo rising sense. Okay, Leo folk, so you got the Queen of Cups upright. So this is just gonna highlight the importance of a female figure in the week ahead who might be you. So for some of my Leo folk, like this is going to be like a boss, a teacher, a family member 
who's going to represent someone who has a positive influence in your life in the week ahead. This may be someone who passes along your resume. This may just be someone who holds space for you and who's like able to like just be a really good listener and just, you know, really make you feel heard and seen and gives you really good feedback. This could be someone that's like helping you with like, you know, a pillar of your career and like, you know, moving it forward or, you know, it could be a mentor or a teacher, who knows. For some Leos, this is going to represent you and it's going to be a time for you to, you know, be in touch with your emotions. Some of you are going to be feeling very positive emotions like love and affection. Some of you, this is going to be about creativity and what you can do with your own uh, innovative creativity. Some of you, it's going to be about, you know, checking in with your intuition and checking in with your psychic powers and developing that stuff. And so... This is just very auspicious and the universe will make clear to you in the week ahead like which scenario it wants you to focus on and which scenario it wants you to turn your attention to and just go do it. Like this is, you know, a very positive card when we get this. Uh, it's, you know, it's queenly, it's royal. So, and it suggests that like, you know, the work that you do emotionally, psychically, intuitively or creatively in the week ahead is going to help propel you forward. So that's great. Okay. Okay. Okay, now my Virgo folk, my Virgo rising signs. Okay, Virgo folk. So you guys got the Seven of Swords in reverse. So Seven of Swords upright is a card of, you know, mental games, manipulation, doing things behind the scenes, being kind of sneaky, shady, gaslighting, those sorts of tactics. So when this card comes up in reverse, it's a card of like, Either the shadiness is coming to light, you know, and it can't be hidden anymore and we're like kind of deconstructing it or like it's happening for no good reason or this can be a card of like self-denial. So one of you had commented this and I thought that this was like a really good interpretation of the card where like you're not trying to like st you're not trying to manipulate others like you are manipulating yourself. So what Virgo folk like one of my worst enemies like about like. 10 years ago was like a Virgo, Virgo with a Virgo rising. And so I don't underestimate Virgos. I've got a Virgo moon. So what I would say like Virgo folk is that like, you guys get, like, you need to check yourself. And I, I'm talking to myself as well. Like make sure that you are not the stalker. Okay. Make sure that like, you're not the one gaslighting people or manipulating people or that you are not the one doing the shady tricks, including to yourself. And also just be on the lookout for things that are not on the up and up. Okay. One thing I like about Virgos is that you're typically, like, very blunt, right? Like, I feel like a lot of Virgo people, like, because you're a Mercury-ruled sign, like, you typically don't have issues just, like, speaking to people directly and saying what you mean. So don't be tempted to try to get the upper hand in a situation um, by machination. So this is a card that reminds us to be blunt and direct in the week ahead with all situations, including the dialogue that we have to ourselves. You might be noticing, you know, temptations of other people to fluff things or to make things better than they are or to like placate or other such things. And this is a week for clear, direct communication. You know, so for example, if you feel the inclination to social media stalk someone, don't. Just call them up, ask them how they're doing. Text them, ask them how they're doing. You know, direct communication because this card is warning that like, I feel like, you know, Virgos can sometimes, I, I feel like with Virgos, because you notice everything, you don't always feel like it's okay to bring everything up. Like you kind of, well, I know some Virgos who have like file cabinets of like dossiers on people and they're like managing their files. Like this card is a reminder, like, you know, be as, this card is a reminder to just engage in the most direct communication as humanly possible in the week ahead. And usually that shouldn't be a problem for you guys. Okay. Okay, now my Libra folk, my Libra rising signs. Okay, Libra folk, so you guys got the Page of Wands in reverse. So upright, the Page of Wands is a card of, you know, young beginnings, new beginnings. So this might be literal people coming into your life. You might, your company might hire a new intern. Uh, you might hire a new assistant. Or you might be the page. You might be trying something new. So when this card comes up in reverse, like it could just be like you're trying something new and you just feel kind of destabilized. Like you just started roller derby and it's like, oh, this is crazy. Like it could just be as literal as that. Or you could be doing something new on the low. Like, you know, roller derby, you know, behind closed doors and you're embarrassed, you don't want to tell anyone. Or like, oh, you're doing like Taekwondo and your friends will make fun of you. But it typically represents like new people coming to our lives or new 
situations. Now, this card being in reverse is not gloom and doom. What it means is just quite simply either like it's happening on the low behind closed doors or it's happening slowly or just the newness of it might make you feel a little destabilized. So, you know, like I said, the Taekwondo class, like, oh, I'm doing Taekwondo now. I hope I don't get hurt or whatever. So with a person coming into your life, yeah, like, yeah, you might be in a, starting a new job and feeling kind of weird and destabilized. But I mean, for the most part, like this is an auspicious card. It's just telling you to be, you know, on the lookout for the wonkiness and the growing pains of new people and new situations. So nothing that the, the scales can't handle, right? Okay. And now my Scorpio folk and my Scorpio rising signs. So, so Scorpio folk, you guys got the Four of Cups. So the Four of Cups is a card of, you know, I often say the closed doors of the heart where someone is being offered something and they're just not ready to receive it. So is there a gift? Is there a gift or a situation or opportunity that's being presented in your life or will be in the week ahead where you're just like, no, not right now. You know, sometimes with this card, I say it's a card of like, I don't want any of your baked goods. So that could be a manifestation of this card in the week ahead where you just kind of feel like you need a minute, you need time, you need just time and space to process emotions. I feel like Scorpios, you guys are great at like taking time to be alone and to process your emotions and to think things over. This could represent like a romantic partner who needs time and space and focus. So I would say that, so I would say that, you know, Scorpios taking your time and taking your space to process and to decide what you want and who you want in your life is like I said, I think it's your superpower. And so there may be things happening in this week ahead that are going to cause you to need to lean on that a bit heavier. So the, the universe is reminding you, hey, go do that and don't be rushed into answering or making decisions about anything in the week ahead. OK, OK, so my Sag folk, my Sag rising signs. OK, Sag folk. So you guys got the eight of wands in reverse. I feel like you guys have gotten this card before lately or maybe I'm mixing you up with someone else. So Eight of Wands is a card of slowness. So I know, Sag folk, you guys like to run into the red mist and jump, you know, into the fray and let's do it. You know, I always say with Sag folk, let's drive home backwards. So with this card in reverse, this is a card of like, you know, things are going to go in the direction that you want them to go. It's just going to take time. And so the universe is urging you in the week ahead to slow down with whatever you're working on, whatever you're endeavoring, like, just take some more time, get into that quiet space that you're not always in and just take some time to reflect and just think about what you want and to muse on things in the week ahead and to consider other actions that are different from what you normally take. So with like Sag folk, I think that like you're very good at being like big and bold and extroverted and you know, doing the thing and roaming and going on adventures. So what would be the antithesis of those actions if you were forced to take them to achieve your goals or to move in the direction that you want? And just like, are there are any of them things that you're open to, open to doing? So in slowing down, the universe is going to be asking you to reflect on a different type of skill set. OK, and now my Capricorn folk and my Capricorn rising signs. OK, Capricorn folk. So you guys got the six of wands in reverse. So this is not a card that Capricorns like to get. So Capricorns, you guys are all about achievement and accomplishment. You are all about this card upright. And it's got to be upright. So with this card in reverse, it may just mean that the achievement and the accomplishment is slow. It's happening behind closed doors. It's happening in secrets. Or there's just obstacles around this, like to getting the prize, to getting the trophy. So you'll see what's going on. Or you just may be disappointed. Like things may not turn out the way that you want. And I feel that a lot of Capricorn folks, like you guys are Zen enough to know that there are situations that you just can't control. Like you're a Saturn ruled sign. I feel like you guys are very good at trying to tr control as much as you can. But even you know, like you have the wisdom of Saturn to know that like you can't control everything. And so that is just something that you may have to make peace with. You know, sometimes all the work you put in, the finished product doesn't always look exactly the way we want it to. It's like, oh, it doesn't look like that thing that was in my head, but that's okay too. You know, sometimes when things look different than, you know, how we want, we just kind of need to like bend with it and just kind of like, you know, riff with it and like 
party with it and it's still kind of okay okay so you know surrendering control and just being a bit more flexible you might be asked to lean into those skills a bit more in the week ahead okay all right and now my Aquarius folk and my Aquarius rising signs okay Aquarius folk so you guys got the four of pentacles in reverse so this is a very, I feel like this card came up last week for another sign. So, so this is a card of letting go. So this may be, the, the universe may literally be asking you to streamline and to release things into the universe. Like it may be just a very little card, like, you know, to attract more abundance into your life. It's time to clean out your closet, make some donations to Goodwill, throw things out. Like sometimes the guides are that literal. Or they may be asking you to let go of uh, people, habits, or situations in your life that just aren't serving you anymore. So I feel like with a lot of Aquarius folks, this has been a long time coming. Like you may need to, you know, prune your, your friend group. This may be, you know, uh, pruning your routines and like, you know, releasing certain, you know, habits that you do, places you go and replacing them with new ones. This is a really good card to get because I feel like a lot of Aquarius folks have already been doing that letting things go, releasing, you know, habits, behaviors, and people that don't serve you anymore. And so this, the universe may be shining a spotlight on that in the week ahead. And so don't be surprised if more scenarios or more inclinations crop up in the week ahead to do exactly that. Okay, and now my Pisces folk, my Pisces rising signs. Okay, Pisces folk. So you guys got the Knight of Pentacles. So the Knight of Pentacles is a card of you know, it is the slowest night. It is the most passive night. And it's not all bad. It's a card where like this night is very, very meticulous. Like he's very, very detail focused. You know, there's like these oak leaves on the horse's snout so that, you know, the flies don't attract, you know, bother the horse. And like, he's just kind of looking at his pentacle very carefully. And so the universe is reminding you, please don't, you know, miss the forest for the trees. Please don't miss the trees for the leaves. What does that mean? It means like, don't lose sight of the bigger picture because you're so focused on the details of something. Like sometimes you just gotta go out there and get a job. You know, you just gotta be like, I need income. Like it's not gonna be perfect, but I just, I have to, I need a job right now or else I'm not gonna survive. And so this is a card that reminds us like sometimes you need to stop doing something and just take a step back and just look at the bigger picture. And this is also a card that reminds you to take action in the week ahead because this, that the action is what this night is lacking. So, you know, Pisces folk, like you're such a mystical sign and you're so connected to spirit and to like mystical things that sometimes you want things to be perfect or to have this like higher ideal. And that's just not always possible because if we try to make it possible in every situation, we're going to get the inactivity of this card. So I'm asking you guys to just like take some mo movement and momentum forward. So that's what I've got for you guys. Comment below. Just let me know how these cards are panning out for you in the week ahead. You'll let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you have any questions about the symbology of the cards, the video on the, you know, behind the card. I'm going to continue that series soon. Like and subscribe. And as always, we'll do this again.